I made a video a few months ago where I made these plain shaving veneers. It's a Japanese craft known as Yusegi. These shavings have a random pattern, but in this video, I'm going to make a new pattern. This time it won't be random, so the pieces need to be very precise. I'll use two contrasting woods. I have this piece of pre-prime construction pine. It's nothing fancy, but it's the lightest wood in color that I could find. It does have finger joints in it, so I'll just have to work around those. And for the darker wood, I have this black wattle. A mate milled these for me a few years ago. They're a bit gnarly, but I'll just see how they go. I'll start by milling all the wood. And because the pieces of the pattern need to be pretty precise, it's important to start with square and flat stock. I only need one good face, but I put the black wattle through the thicknesser just so I could choose the best face. The first pieces I need will be three millimeters thick, so I'm taking a slice on the bandsaw and I'm cutting it a little oversized. I'll make two versions of the pattern. One will be mostly light with the pine and the veneer of the black wattle for the contrast. The other will be an inverse of that with the black wattle as the main pieces. So whatever pieces I cut, I need to make with both species of wood. Next I'll put them through the thicknesser and I'll do that by sticking them down first to this piece of laminate flooring. I've determined the grain direction so I know which way to feed it into the thicknesser, then using double sided tape I stick them all down. I put two or three lines of tape at the front of the workpiece and then every two or three inches after that. A better way to do this would be with a drum sander, but as I don't have one of those, I'll manage with the thicknesser. I'm not surprised at all that the black wattle didn't work out as the grain was running in opposite directions. The pine came out perfect though. It's just a case of experimenting and trying different wood just to see what works best. I do have some better grade black wattle and I've made some pretty thin veneers from it in the past but instead I'm going to try this piece of reclaimed cedar. And as always the piece you need is always on the bottom and it runs the whole length of the rack but I only need a short section of it. As it's only one piece, I'm cleaning it up and flattening it with a hand plane. Before planing it, I did have a good look for any nails, but before I go any further, I'll use this rare earth magnet on a stick to do a slightly better check. It's not foolproof, but by checking over the workpiece thoroughly, you should be able to find any nails. I did check both sides and I checked the whole thing a couple of times. There weren't any nails, but just to show that it does work, these drawer fronts were fixed with tiny pin nails and the magnet finds those easily. I'll remove the pine piece and stick down the cedar, put that through the thicknesser and see how that goes. It wasn't quite as good as the pine, but much better than the black wattle and still very usable. I'm probably ready for some new cutters in my thicknesser and that would improve things too. The three millimeter pieces are all done. Now I need to do the whole process again, but this time making thin veneers of around one millimeter thick. Again, I'm cutting the slices oversize and doing that at around two millimeters. With each cut, I'm making very small adjustments to the depth and that's to minimize the chance of tear out.
This particular double-sided tape is extremely strong, but by being careful, it isn't too difficult to remove the veneer, and I reckon they turned out great. There's a few imperfections and a little tear out on the cedar, but there's still plenty of good stuff there to work with. Each piece will be made up of two 3mm boards and they'll sandwich a piece of contrasting veneer. For this one I'll use two pieces of veneer and it should be fine and I don't think it'll show up in the final pieces. To clamp the pieces, I'm going to use a vacuum bag. I bought this one years ago from an op shop. It was an absolute bargain. It didn't have the pump though, so I had to buy that separately. And even though I've had it five years, I've never actually used it before. That worked amazingly well. I left it overnight and it kept the pressure up over the whole night with no leaks at all. You may remember this jig from my recent plywood pattern video. It has a 15 degree bed and the blade is angled at 45 degrees, leaving a 30 degree cut. Click the link above for that video and you can see the jig in more detail. I'm using a stop to dial in the correct width of the pieces and then making any adjustments. I'm still cutting off the top of the upper layer so I need to make the piece wider to allow for that. I can do that with a micro adjustment screw on my stop. As I said in the previous video where I used this jig, my fingers are close to the blade and I'm comfortable with that. But even though I'm doing this, I'm certainly not recommending that you do the same. And it's up to you to determine what's safe in your own workshop. I use a hold down stick to apply pressure when the workpiece gets too short. You could use this for all the cuts and it wouldn't be difficult to set up a clamp for the jig either. That's the pine ones cut now onto the cedar. They're not cutting super clean, so I'm not confident I've picked the best wood for this. When I come to take shavings, the wood needs the plane well, and I'm thinking now that I'll probably get some tear out, but I'll keep going and I'll see what happens.
Next, I'll cut some strips of veneer and notice which direction the grain is running. In the final piece that I'll try and take shavings off, the face will be all face grain. So it's important to get the grain direction right, not only in the veneers, but in all of the pieces. Now that the pieces are glued up into prisms, I'll use these to start building up the rest of the pattern by gluing them together. First, I need to clean them up a little just to remove any stray glue so they fit together well. I haven't made many sticks, so I'll cut them in half to give me more pieces to work with. I noticed when I removed the rubber bands that I hadn't done a very good job of the glue up and now I'm realizing how poor they really are. There's a lot of gaps which I could have negated by adding a couple more twists to the rubber band and tightening them up. I'll know for next time but I'll continue with it and if I can't get a good shaving from the finished block I'll still be able to use the block itself for something. Now I'm gluing four prisms together with the veneers to make a larger prism. The cedar ones really aren't looking so good. I didn't do a very good job of lining the pieces up when I glued together the original prisms. I'm confident though that next time I try this pattern, I'll make some improvements. Now I need to glue two prisms together to make a diamond. This is the last step before slicing up the sticks into tiles and building up the final pattern. For the strips of veneers that go between the tiles, the grain will run the opposite way to all the strips that I've cut so far. Again, this is to ensure that there's no end grain showing in the final block.
I put some packing tape on the workbench to clamp the cedar block down too. And I also used the piece of scrap foam board to spread the weight as the veneers are slightly proud. I'm nearly there, the last thing to do is to add a strip of veneer down the sides of the blocks. To make it more stable and easier for planing the shavings, I'll glue it to a piece of plywood and I'll also glue a block of pine to each end to protect the start and the end of the shavings. I really didn't have high hopes for this, but while flattening the surface, it actually looked more promising than I thought. You can see all the gaps quite clearly now it's flattened. It's not ideal, but let's just give it a go. And wow, that's a full shaving. There are plenty of gaps, but all the pieces are there and they're intact. It's holding together well after carefully flattening it with the iron. If I use these shavings, I'll have to add some filler here and there, but the outcome is much better than I'd hoped after gluing the original prisms and noticing all the gaps. The block is only nine millimeters thick. I probably should have made it thicker, which I'll definitely do next time, but the shavings are only a third of a millimeter, so I should still be able to get a fair amount from it. The cedar ones are holding together too, but as I said earlier, they're not lined up as well. And there's also some tear outs, but with some filler to patch it up, I reckon they'll still be usable. The video wouldn't be complete without making something using the shavings. I'll do that next, but first I'll just mention, as quite a few people have asked, I managed to make a few bookmarks with the old Yusagi pattern and they're up on my website now. I really didn't have time to make many, so if you want one, you'll probably have to be quick. I quickly made this small box off camera and I'll finish it off with the new shavings. I made the box to the dimensions of the pattern so the pattern continues all the way around.
I'm not spending too long on the box and to speed things up, I'm using water-based varnish just so I can get a few coats on fast. It's probably not the best finish, but it will be fine. I said earlier that I'd need to add some filler, but I haven't added any to the pattern at all, and it does look pretty good. I did fill a small crack on the cedar top, but that was all. To cut the lid off, I'm using the thinnest saw that I have, and to help with that, I'm going to try sticking a guide to it with double-sided tape. I've not tried this before, but I can't see why it shouldn't work. Because it's been clamped down, I'm sawing all the way through the ends, but leaving some on the sides, and I'll finish those off next. I made the box and finished it all in a day. It's not the best being so rushed, but I know my daughter will be happy with it anyway. There's many more patterns to attempt in Yusegi, and I may attempt those in future videos. Let me know if that's something you want to see. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.